Imagine being presumed vanished from the face of the Earth, only to reappear and challenge everything we thought we knew about extinction. In the realm of animals, this isn't as impossible as you might think. Let's delve into some amazing creatures that have played hide-and-seek with history. Imagine a creature straight out of the history books, swimming alongside the very dinosaurs we often marvel at. This is the story of the Kulakanth, a fish believed to have been extinct for 65 million years. But in 1938, off the east coast of South Africa, a shock awaited the world. A local fisherman hauled in a peculiar-looking fish with lobed fins, reminiscent of ancient depictions. The discovery sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Why is the Kulakanth so intriguing? Well, it's not just its age. This living fossil possesses a unique combination of characteristics. For instance, the Kulakanth has a hinged joint in the skull, which allows the fish to widen its mouth for large prey. Additionally, its lobed fins, which resemble limbs, suggest an evolutionary link between fish and tetrapods. Their discovery provided a tantalizing glimpse into the evolutionary stages that possibly led to creatures walking on land. Every sighting since then has been like peering into a time capsule, allowing scientists and enthusiasts a rare view of a prehistoric world. Now, from the deep waters to the dense forests of Southeast Asia, picture a nocturnal creature with a squirrel-like head, a long tail, and a body reminiscent of a rat. This is the Laotian rock rat, or Carnu, a creature believed to have disappeared from the face of the Earth over 11 million years ago. But in 2005, this rat made headlines. The Laotian rock rat doesn't just look unusual, it holds a unique position in the evolutionary tree. It's neither a rat nor a squirrel, but belongs to its own ancient Mammalian lineage. Found in local food markets in Laos, and later identified by scientists, its rediscovery was like finding a missing piece to an evolutionary puzzle. Its very existence challenged previously held beliefs about rodent evolution, reinforcing the idea that there's so much about our planet that remains unknown. Picture a lush, dense rainforest with tall trees and diverse wildlife. Now imagine discovering a tree in this forest that was believed to have disappeared millions of years ago. This is the story of the nightcap oak. But the story starts not with a tree, but with a leaf. A fossilized leaf, to be precise. Paleobotanists, those who study ancient plants, identified these fossils as being from a species long extinct, a relic from a bygone era. Then, in the late 20th century, a small population of a peculiar tree was discovered in Australia's nightcap range. The resemblance was undeniable. The living tree matched the fossilized remains of the supposed extinct nightcap oak. Researchers were left stunned. How could a tree believed to have been extinct for millions of years still be standing tall in modern forests? Imagine an island in the South Pacific where myths and legends come alive. The Ile des Pins, part of New Caledonia, is home to a creature straight out of local legends, the terror skink. With its elongated, snake-like body, long, sharp teeth and large size for a skink, you might say it's aptly named. For decades, this creature was considered a myth, a tall tale told by islanders but believed to be extinct by scientists with only a single specimen ever found in the late 1800s. However, the legend became reality in 2003 when researchers rediscovered the terror skink in its native habitat. This wasn't just any lizard. The terror skink is a specialized predator, its sharp teeth suggesting a diet of not just insects, but also other small creatures, making it unique among skinks. Its rediscovery provided not just validation for the tales of the local inhabitants, but also invaluable data on the biodiversity and evolutionary patterns of the region. The terror skink story is more than just a tale of a lizard's return. It's about respecting indigenous knowledge, the tales and myths of local communities that often contain kernels of ecological truths. In a rapidly changing world, these stories and the species they hint at are precious links to our planet's rich and diverse past. In the scorching, dry landscapes of the Gran Chaco, spanning parts of Argentina, Bolivia and Paraguay, the tales of a mysterious wild pig wandered the whispers of locals. They spoke of an animal that resembled the common peccary but with key differences. For scientists, this creature only existed as fossils dating back to the Pleistocene era. They called it the Chacoan peccary. Fast forward to the 1970s. His exploration of remote parts of the Gran Chaco intensified. An astounding discovery was made. The so-called extinct Chacoan peccary was very much alive. 
roaming the vast expanses of the thorny forests. Unlike its close relatives, the Shakan peccary had longer legs, a third hind toe, and a unique behavior of forming dusty wallows, possibly to protect against insect bites and the intense sun. This rediscovery wasn't just an academic eureka moment. It was a poignant reminder of the vast mysteries that vast wildernesses like the Gran Chaco still hold. Today, however, the Chacoan peccary faces a new challenge. With deforestation and habitat loss, these living fossils now teeter on the brink of extinction once again, prompting urgent conservation efforts. The story of the Lord Howe Island stick insect is a chilling thriller, complete with shipwrecks, rats and resurrection. Once plentiful on the Lord Howe Island, situated between Australia and New Zealand, this flightless nocturnal insect, often referred to as the land lobster due to its considerable size, the introduction of invasive black rats following a shipwreck led to a rapid decline of these gentle giants, and by 1920 they were declared extinct. But fast forward to 2001, and the plot took an unexpected twist. On Ball's Pyramid, a steep and inhospitable rock spire southeast of Lord Howe Island, researchers stumbled upon a tiny population of the stick insects clinging to life. This Lazarus species, one that reappeared after being considered extinct, amazed the world. How did they survive in such an inhospitable environment? The discovery prompted immediate conservation efforts, including a breeding program at the Melbourne Zoo. The Lord Howe Island stick insect story serves as a gripping testament to nature's resilience, the dangers of invasive species, and the significant impact humans can have on delicate ecosystems. It is indeed a creature that came back from the dead, but its future, closely tied to our conservation decisions, remains uncertain. New Zealand, with its unique ecosystems, has been the birthplace of some of the world's most fascinating avian species, many of which have unfortunately faced the brunt of human encroachment and introduced predators. One such avian marvel is the takahe. Sporting vibrant plumage with hues of blue and green and a robust red beak, the takahe was once widespread across New Zealand's South Island. By the late 19th century, with the encroachment of humans and their accompanying menagerie of invasive species, the Takahe's numbers dwindled rapidly. They were declared extinct after the last four known specimens were taken in the 1890s. The world believed that this was the end of the Takahe's tale. But in 1948, in the Murchison Mountains of Fiordland, Dr. Jeffrey Orbel rediscovered a small population of these magnificent birds, hidden away from the modern world. Conservationists are now working hard to protect them from the threats of habitat loss and invasive predators. With careful management, there's hope that the Takahe's song will continue to resonate across the New Zealand landscape. Whispers of a small, elegant horse, believed to have been lost to the sands of time, were circulated among horse enthusiasts for centuries. This horse, known from ancient art and literature, was thought to have been ridden by some of the earliest civilizations in the world, including the Persians. It was the Caspian horse. Most believe the Caspian horse, with its fine features, arched neck and spirited temperament, had vanished from the face of the earth until a groundbreaking discovery in the 1960s. Louise Firouz, an American horsewoman living in Iran, found a group of these diminutive equines near the Caspian Sea. Genetic testing confirmed the ancient lineage of these horses, linking them directly to those depicted in the art of ancient Persia from over 2,500 years ago. Deep within the heart of the Sulawesi rainforests in Indonesia lurked a ghostly creature, thought to be lost to science and the world for nearly a century. This creature was the Pygmy Tarsier, a tiny primate that's no bigger than a human fist, with large saucer-like eyes that seem to pierce the very fabric of the night. These creatures are the stuff of legends. They're adapted to a nocturnal life, using their big eyes to see in the dark and their elongated fingers to grasp tree branches and hunt insects. For almost 80 years, no living specimen was found, making many believe they were extinct. However, in 2000, researchers unexpectedly caught a pygmy tarsier in a rat trap. A subsequent expedition in 2008 sighted and safely captured three individuals, offering a thrilling confirmation that the species was far from extinct. These mysterious primates with their haunting eyes have spurred conservation efforts in the region, emphasizing the importance of preserving habitats that house such rare and elusive species. 
Javan elephants were once believed to roam the vast landscapes of Java, Indonesia, before being declared extinct by the end of the 19th century due to hunting and habitat loss. Ancient Javanese literature and carvings suggested a rich history of these majestic creatures playing pivotal roles in royal ceremonies and battles. Their absence was felt deeply. However, in a twist that would rewrite the history of elephants in the region, studies suggest that the elephants currently residing in Borneo might be descendants of Javan elephants, which were perhaps gifted to the Sultan of Sulu in the 18th century and later abandoned in North Borneo. And as always, I hope you enjoyed our vad today. Thanks for watching.